this is the moment that I, well, that you've probably waited, been waiting for, but one that I have been waiting for for quite some time. Now, uh, before I start, I just want to give a big thank you to the folks over at Knife Joy. Chris Miller over at Knife Joy and the rest of the crew there. Um, I pre-ordered what is in this box, what feels like forever and 10 years ago, okay? In fact, this is a knife that was originally showcased by Spyderco, by the way, and that'll give you a little hint, uh, at 2018 SHOT Show, okay? And it released, oh man, I wanna say, they say it released, what, the beginning of February, just after SHOT Show 2019. I was so psyched when I found out that the uh, Spyderco calendar included, uh, excuse me, the Spyderco catalog uh, for the first quarter of 2019 included this guy and oh my gosh, I just uh, I can't I can't wait anymore. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and show it to you because this is This is it man. Okay Whew. All right, let me just take a moment put this to the side and All right, so let's go ahead and get this review started. Okay now this is the unveiling and a first look at uh, a knife that I I'm not gonna lie, I've been waiting so long for. And here we go. You guessed it, folks. It is none other than the Spyderco Smock. It is here, it has arrived. Ladies and gents, it is bad. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and put this down, set this to the side. Actually, I'll put this over here, kind of like as a little backdrop, and set this guy right here so you can see what it is that we are working in, okay? Now, a um, few things. I checked a couple of knife sites before I went ahead and I did this video. Uh, particularly, I checked Knife Center, I checked um, GP Knives, I che checked uh, Knives Ship Free, and I checked Blade HQ. As of right now, they either haven't gotten any in stock, they are out of stock, or they're still accepting pre-orders. And if they were accepting pre-orders, I wanna say, what, 90% of them are no longer accepting pre-orders because this guy has pretty much outsold the pre-orders. I mean, everybody was so psyched when they heard that this was coming out. Kevin Smock's SK23 design uh, reimagined through a collaboration with uh, Spyderco, okay? So there's a lot of good um, uh, uh, with this knife. I was able to carry it for a little bit before I, I just did this little unveiling. Um, and there's a few things that I kind of wanted to touch up on that I felt you know, could use uh, a, a little bit of work. It's it's not bad by any means. I mean, it may be good for some people, it may not be. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the basics. Okay, so now uh, two ways to open this. There's the thumb hole, okay, which I love. You can spider flick it, which I've never really been good at it, but I can do that, okay? And then you can do this from the front, okay? And then there is this cool little flipper tab that you see right here. It is squared off and it is almost flush with the scale handles. And it kind of squares off here. It's kind of like a Bic lighter, but not because it doesn't have any ridges here and it's not rounded off. It really, it's really cool, okay? And that thwack, you can hear that, just listen. Oh, that's so badass. <laughs> okay, so. I'll go ahead and place that right here so that we can start with the, the dimensions. Now, um, we'll start with the blade itself, okay? Now, the blade is uh, from, from the base to the tip, it is 3.375 inches, okay? Now, the usable portion of the blade, meaning from this part at the base, right here where this kind of pseudo choil is, all the way to the tip, you're actually getting 2.875 inches. Okay, a blade length. That is a Warncliffe style blade, which is kind of an amalgam of the, now, not the Spyderco amalgam, but like an amalgam meaning like a, a mixture of the Warncliffe style blade and the reverse Tonto. Think kind of like the reverse Tonto that is present on 
the Benchmade uh, 940 series, the Osborne series. Yeah, I, that's the easiest way that I can go ahead and describe it, okay? Um, you have carbon fiber G10 handles. Now, the um, let me see here. The overall length on this guy, okay, is 7.875 inches, okay? You have a blade think thickness okay, of 0 0.12. So it's not a thin, thin slicer, but it's not a thick, beefy blade, okay? You have CPM S30V steel right here, and it was designed in the US, but it was manufactured in Taiwan in the Taichung facility. You have the maker's mark there with Kevin Smock and the signature Spyderco logo with the round hole. Oh yeah and a sticker didn't come with it but something i wanted to bring out kind of just you know part of the whole spidey setup okay um now uh aside from it being the warm cliff and the, the reverse tanto uh tanto uh setup you have a nice hollow grind finish and this is satin by the way look at that that's a really, really nice setup. I like this knife a lot. I think the design and the aesthetics are really cool based on the kind of knives that I uh, personally carry. Um, in this case, right now, what I have is my Benchmade Cosba. If you notice, it's kind of blocky like this, but I'll get to that in a moment because uh, that's something I just want to talk to you about. So uh, the handle length in itself is four and a half inches, okay? And it's a button compression lock, okay? So when you open it, if you look closely, you can see it's kind of like a, a liner lock from the back that it looks like. Uh, Spyderco's uh, uh, compression lock um, is essentially wor works like a backwards liner lock because it's, it's facing the back. What they've done here is they use the, a button to actuate the, the uh, compression lock. So as such, when you press the button, it goes right in. And then when it's not being used, it sits almost flush with the scales, which are carbon fiber G10. And I love them. I just, I, okay, let's go ahead and talk about those. Now, the carbon fiber G10 on these, I, I, I got to say, I'm, I am a fan of the G10 um well, just G10 in general. Um, I have the Spyderco Para 3. I love the G10. It's nice and grippy without being, you know, too, too crazy. In fact, hold on. Let me go ahead and just reach out for this guy over here. And then I have um, the Kaiser Domen, who kind of has a pattern that's similar to that of the, um, the smock, but it's not quite. Um, and this is also G10. It's a nice and grippy as well. It's kind of got like a larger... Like, kind of like a brick pattern, okay? But no, this guy right here, it's a carbon fiber G10 setup and it's nice and grippy. When your hands get wet or when this knife gets wet, you are going to be able to hold on to this. You're gonna get a nice purchase on this and you're not gonna have any issues uh, with this slipping in your hand. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's something I really, really liked. Um, if you want a comparison to this, if you happen to own, say something like the, um, Oh, I don't know, the, the, the Para 3 or the Para 2 series in um, 52100 steel. I believe they also came out with this same style of carbon fiber G10. So go ahead and check that out. Um, one thing I also really like is are, are these see-through uh, portal holes. You get three on each side. Can't really see it from there because they're under the clip. But what happens is when the knife itself is open, they are entirely see-through. Now you can't really see through there because the clip is here, but if you look, there's those three holes. And it's completely see-through construction. I think that that's really nice. Um, another knife that I know that has that set up with the holes is the Kaiser uh, Guru. That's a Matt Degnan design. Um, also another really nice knife, but it's a bit beefy for the size. And I mean, I don't know, I might, I might actually pick one up so I can review. But in the meantime, this is one of the few that I've seen that I think really works. Um, I'm a fan of this. It, it gives a little bit of a mid-tech or a custom flair to a production model. And um, I think it's really nice. Not all of uh, Kevin Smock's SK23 model, which is what this is uh, modeled after, actually has that. So it's something that um, adds that little bit extra flair. Okay. Now, 
Um, one other thing I want to go ahead and talk about is the jimping on the back. You have three ridges here, okay? It's And it's nice and pronounced. Let me go ahead and see if I can get as close as I can. You see that when you put, I got fat thumbs. So when I put my thumbs in there, that meat gets all up in there. It gets all up in there and it will not move. And if it does, it's going to take a piece of, of my skin with it. So when you're going to use this and you're going to use the jimping, you better believe that you're going to get some nice real estate right there and it's going to stay where it needs to be. In fact, it leaves that little purchase, uh, leaves a little signature on your thumb or your finger, whatever you use to go ahead and um, uh, use the jimping on. So uh, just as an FYI, let me go ahead and just leave it like this right here so you can check it out that way. Okay. And yeah. Okay. Boom. All right. So uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's also the, um, the two-sided uh, tip up uh, clip. This is the spoon clip that they usually provide with some of their, uh, their models. Uh, I'm a fan, but, and I carried it this way and I understand why it was done this way, but I'm gonna swap it out with an MXG deep carry clip. You better believe I'm gonna go ahead and swap it out with uh, you know something like this. Uh, in fact, I already have it ordered. Uh, so when it gets here, I'm going to go ahead and swap that out. Okay. And you'll probably see it again in comparison videos with that already done. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that, that is something I just wanted to go ahead and talk about. There's a lanyard hole and it is lined. You have uh, steel liners and these steel liners. Let me see if they are. Yep. They are. Well, the holes are cut through both the carbon fiber G10 and the steel uh, liner. So there is, I guess, some some weight that is reduced with that. Okay, but other than that, there aren't any more holes that are um, inside of the liners to skeletonize it so, that, so it can go ahead and reduce the weight. Which, by the way, um, if I, let me see here, let me look at my notes. Yeah, I do have the weight. The weight itself is 3.64 ounces, okay? And um, it, like I said before, um, there are different ways of opening it. This is a manual flipper, so it's not assisted. And this runs on bearings. If you actually happen to check uh, Nick Shabazz's uh, disassembly video on this particular model, he shows not only is this on bearings, but it has two detent balls that are inside. That's part of the design that I believe probably delayed the, the CQI, the constant quality improvement uh, on this particular knife and delayed its release, what, probably six months? Because what they ended up doing, they added a second detent ball inside, and you can see it in his video, um, presumably to improve the, the, the snappy action and keep it from being classified or, uh, you know, being used, something like a, a gravity knife. Okay, and that's probably, and he thinks so, a slicey dicey thinks so, and I will probably throw my two cents in and say, I think that that's the reason why it was delayed so long as well, okay? So, um, I mean, and the reason why they say that, you know, the Taichung factory, it comes out with, they come out with some really, really nice models, but there seems to be a, a lack of detent on um, the compression lock uh, Taichung models. And they went ahead and alleviated that with this particular uh, model, which I'm I'm very glad they did. They took their time and they came out with a really, really nice product that, that does almost everything perfect. Now, I said almost everything because there are a few things that I just wanna go over. Um, but before I do, let's go ahead and do this. Put this to the side here, put this to the side, and I'm gonna bring out some little buddies as far as a size comparison, okay? So here we have Spyderco Dragonfly 2, okay? We have the, let's see here, the Para 3. Yeah, Spidey Flick. Okay, as you can see, let me go ahead and see if I can line it up there, okay? We have the Benchmade Kazda, all right. You can see those are pretty close in size. Okay. We have the, let's see here, what do we have? Uh, Kershaw Link 420 high carbon steel. Nice little USA made folder with some nice value to it. Assisted, but in any case, still a good quality, especially if you get one of these in M390. 
That is about the size. Okay, let me put this guy away here. This is the Fox Core from Fox Knives in Italy. This is an N690CO uh, folder. This is the FX604 made in Maniago, Italy. I believe that's a uh, Jesper, Jesper Voxnays design. And uh, sorry, I keep uh, reaching over for this stuff. And this is a Kershaw Blur with MXG deep carry clip. Okay. And there you go. All right, so you got a couple of knives there so you can see kind of as a comparison how big or um, how, how the size of the smock actually is. So there you have it. Now, what do I think about it? Okay, well, uh, the good, I like the fact that it's it's uh, tapped for left or right hand carry. Um, if they had to use any of their clips, I'm glad that they use this one uh, over the wire clip. Um, I think that this is something that ended up uh, being a good, um, a good compromise, even though it's below the lanyard hole. I don't understand why they do that to try to appease the people that wear lanyards. I mean, not everybody in the EDC community really wears them, but I mean, it is what it is. And at least with this uh, this um, hole set up for the uh, the pocket clip, it allows you to go ahead and swap it with a compatible deep carry clip from you know, say Pops Custom Clips, uh, Casey Lynch, or in my case, the ones that I usually get are the titanium ones from MXG Carry, okay, which is already on its way. Um, the knife itself is fairly thick if you look at it, but it starts to taper off towards the end when you have that reverse tanto and it gets nice and thin right at the tip. That's gonna be very good for puncturing and then this um, modified Warncliff is going to make it a very, very nice slicer. And it, the, the hollow grind actually reaches out pretty, pretty far up and makes it a nice thin profile, even though it has that thick stock uh, on it. Now, this, like I said, is on bearings. It's almost drop shut, but it's not quite drop shut because of that second detent ball. And now bear in mind, I have not taken this out of the, the box to clean it. I haven't disassembled it. I'm probably gonna do that off camera and then I'll go ahead and test it. But like I said, this is basically, yeah, it's almost drop shut. Try it one more time. Come on. Yeah. Needs a little help there. Okay, we'll try one more time. All right, there you go. All right, not the best, but hey, it's good enough for me, okay? There are a lot of people that are like, oh my God, it has to have drop shut action. You know, kind of like, um, like this guy right here. It is a thick blade, it's kind of heavy, but the moment you disengage that lock, I mean, boom, it's good to go. This is not gonna be the case, and presumably it's because of the detent balls, and maybe it's because of the fact that I had to take this part, uh, lube it, and put it together again, but that's something to consider. <clears throat> so, things that I think need a little bit of work. That uh, lanyard hole, I'm never gonna use that. I don't know why they did it. They can maybe put this over here and that over there. I don't know. I don't know what they would've done with that. There wasn't a lot of space to work with, so I mean, I don't know why they ended up choosing to, 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 to use that. So uh, I don't know why they ended up using a lanyard hole, I guess it's to appease a small fraction of the EDC crowd. This isn't really something that I feel would benefit from having a lanyard hole, but again, that's just me. Um, secondly, the clip itself is begging for a deep carry clip. I already spoke about that. <clears throat> Thirdly, now, while this is a good steal, it's uh, Spyderco's S30V, uh, it's a Crucible Powder Metallurgy, S30V, that's the CPM by the way. Um, on this side, as you can see, it says it's the Taichung Taiwan uh, factory that this was manufactured from. The, the gripe I have about it is that a lot of the good quality knives that you see that are released from the Taichung factory, in fact, I'll go ahead and put this out here so you can see it like that, okay? A lot of the good knives that are produced out of the Taichung factory have CTS XHP steel, which in my opinion is a better overall performer than S30V steel, or at least the way that Spyderco, um, he treats uh, their steel, okay? That kind of irks me because, I mean, you know, if you're gonna pay the, the, the retail price on this, I mean, they have MSRP at 250, which makes the, uh, the, the map price that you're gonna see this on pretty much everywhere under the sun, 
unless you know they they disobey the map pricing in which case they're not going to be selling these for long but usually you're going to find this at 160 to 50 plus shipping maybe the shipping is free depending on the amount that you buy and the website you get it from but it's going to be 162 dollars and 50 cents that's kind of a steep price and it's a hard sell for s30v especially when you have you know uh knives like uh oh, i don't know the kershaw link which is from kershaw of course it's an american made and then you also have the kershaw dividend okay both knives that come in 420 hc but you can get these both um at sprint run, well, no, i don't want to say sprint run but limited versions in m390 okay now why or, or even s35 vn steel not even s30v S35 VN Steel on M3, M390, and they are both going to be way under $162.50. In fact, you can get the upgraded version of the Benchmade uh, Mini Grip Tilian, if I'm not mistaken. Ugh, I said that really weird. The Benchmade Mini Grip Tilian, you can get the gray uh, 20 CV version for probably about that much. Okay, so you have to really like this particular design. Luckily, I am a big fan of Kevin Smock. And I saw the uh, the mid production model, meaning the, the prototype that they had at Blade Show uh, 2018. I got to handle that uh, particular model, and I was sold on it from the moment that it hit my hands. This is not something that is a definitive everyday carry knife. This isn't the definitive hard use knife. This isn't the definitive office knife. This is a check all of those boxes knife. You can wear this in the office. It's, 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 you know, versatile enough to wear in the office. It's versatile to wear, you know, to throw in your pocket jeans and, and head out when you are out on the town. It is, uh, you know, you can put this into your hiking bag and take it out with you when you're hiking. This is a good enough performer that it will handle all of those tasks, whether it's opening boxes, you know, opening letters, uh, you know, um, basically doing knifey stuff, food prep, all of that very, very well, okay? And you're not going to have problems with this. The um, the button lock works exceptionally well. The flipper, like I said, it works really well. You can still use the thumb holes, which, by the way, they are not sharp at all. Okay, you hear me, people who uh, who design the Delica? Yeah, looking at you guys. All right, nothing sharp about that. Okay, and that's something to really be proud of. I'm gonna let that stick out and just kind of keep that there because that looks kind of sexy. All right, so eh, you know what? No. All right, there we go. All right, so um, that's my gripe about it. Uh, it. It could be, you know, slightly better steel. Um, the the lanyard hole is not really something that I like. Oh, and one other thing, I'm not really that big of a fan with regards to the thickness of the knife itself. Okay, you can't really see it from here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. This is almost a half an inch thick. It's a 0.45. Okay, I'm gonna show you as a comparison. This is the Spyderco Para 3. I'm going to show these both to you. See, if maybe I can provide that there. It's very close, okay? But I feel almost as if like the knife itself is way too thick for being what it is, okay? At least this, you know, it's you're gonna get a nice thick purchase. You get a nice purchase on it, and uh, you're gonna be good to go. I kind of just feel like the smock was a little bit too thick. Maybe, maybe the the the, the carbon fiber G10 handles could have been shaved down just a little bit, shaved down a hair. You know, um, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But yeah, there you go. Those are my three. I guess you can say uh gripes about it a little needs work you know the um the lanyard hole you have the steel that could have been upgraded for the price that you're paying i mean you're paying 162.50 i would have liked to have seen this in uh ctos xhp and i'm not sure if they're going to be making something like this which is a production version of the um the the custom which is the sk23 from kevin smock um i don't know if they're going to end up making a sprint run version of this they're probably not maybe they will maybe they won't maybe we will just have to wait and see i do know that kevin smock is offering mods on this particular knife and i may actually yeah i think i'm going to go ahead and reach out to him and see what i can do to kind of specialize this and uh make this mine um 
we're gonna go ahead and, and, and see what we can do with that. So yeah, like I said, there's the lanyard hole, there's the steel for the cost, and then, I don't know, the thickness is, yeah, it's, it's, it's not quite a thin knife, but again, you're not gonna exactly have thick blade stock on a thin uh, scaled knife. So yeah, those are the three things that I find to be the biggest issue with this knife. But if you can get over that, let me tell you something, you've got a lot of value on this knife. This is a lot of pizzazz. People see this and you'll be like, wow, that is a different looking knife. Even for being a Spyderco with their Spyderco uh, signature trade hole, I mean, you know, the thumb hole, this is just, it's a really, it's a, it's a nice looking knife. It's a nice looking knife. I mean, it came sharp, very, very sharp outside of the factory. I think all I'm gonna do is put this, uh, um, put this on my strop. I have a, a strop bat, a four-sided strop bat with compound and bare leather that I'm gonna put this on. And yeah, that's that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. So thank you for taking a moment and uh, reviewing this particular knife with me. This is the Spyderco Smock. That's right, the Kevin Smock design based off the SK23, made in the Taiwan Taichung Factory, carbon fiber G10 scales. And this is model C240 CFP by Spyderco. Now remember, no matter what I say, take it with a grain of salt because at the end of the day, it's really what you are looking for in the knife that makes you wanna buy it. So whether you choose to buy this guy, whether you choose to EDC, pair of three, whether you choose to go ahead and pick up the Dragonfly, no matter what you use, even maybe if it's something else, if you EDC, think of DCS. Thanks for watching everybody. Be sure to go and hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already so you can pick up some of the updates. And uh, maybe I'll do a little customization of this guy, put up a video and you'll be first to know because you have subscribed. Um, if you want to go ahead and follow me on Instagram, you can do so at Daily Carry Solutions. And if you choose to go ahead and leave a comment below or send me a message, you can go ahead and do so at my website, which is dailycarrysolutions.com. Go ahead and hit the contact page and you can send me an email and I'd be more than happy to go ahead and respond in turn. So thanks for taking a moment to go ahead and check out this particular video. Spyderco, you did a good one on this one, man. I got to tell you. Wow, really, really nice. Well guys, that's it for today. I think I hear that theme music turning on. I'm gonna just go ahead and say, take it easy.